Here is the image of NASA's astronaut, Sunita Williams, ahead of Boeing's crew flight test. And here is her recent shocking image. After five months of being left in space, because technical difficulties with the Boeing Starliner delayed her return. Can't believe that, from a healthy woman, Sunita is now skin and bones. It is no exaggeration to say that the Boeing Starliner is the most disastrous space program ever, as its dire consequences were not only immediate but also lingering, leading to harrowing situations for the astronauts. So, what exactly happened to the Boeing Starliner astronaut in this case? How did NASA respond? Find out everything in today's episode. SpaceX's Crew-9 mission is one of the most special missions ever for NASA. This is not just a regular astronaut transport mission to the ISS. More than that, it is a rescue mission. Crew-9 launched on September 28th, and unlike previous flights, it sent only two astronauts instead of four. The reason is very simple. The remaining two were cut from the flight in order to make room for two other NASA astronauts, Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, who are currently stuck at the station without a dedicated ride home. Butch and Suni are victims of NASA's terrible Boeing crew flight test, which happened from June 6th to September 7th. Technical problems on the Boeing Starliner forced Wilmore and Williams to stay in space for up to eight months longer than the originally planned eight days. The duo now will hitch a ride home with two Crew-9 astronauts when Crew-9 departs in February 2025. The two NASA astronauts' much longer than expected stay on the ISS has raised concerns about the risks to their health. As you know, the human body is not designed to adapt to the zero-gravity environment of space. When we are on the Earth, we are strongly affected by the force of gravity. We have a small organ called the vestibular organ deep inside our ears, in the inner ear, that sends gravity information to the brain, and the brain uses it to keep our bodies balanced. By contrast, on the ISS, or spacecraft that have flown into space, the force of gravity is much weaker than on the Earth, meaning the information received from the vestibular organs changes. This is thought to confuse the brain leading to symptoms of space sickness such as headaches, nausea, and vomiting. But this condition does not continue for very long. If you stay for a few days in space, your brain adjusts its interpretation of the vestibular information, so the space sickness goes away. There are individual differences in the severity of space sickness, and some people don't experience it at all. When you return to Earth, you experience the effects of Earth's gravity again and thus, gravity sickness sometimes occurs, with similar symptoms as space sickness. Of course, this is not a serious problem and astronauts can avoid it by taking a special type of medication, such as intranasal scopolamine, which is a fast-acting nasal spray aimed at preventing motion sickness. In addition, astronauts undergo a two-week quarantine before launch, known as health stabilization, to minimize the risk of illness. This period involves limited contact with others and is designed to ensure they are not sick or incubating any illnesses when they reach the International Space Station. They also are carefully screened for health issues and their physical fitness is closely monitored. While NASA has managed to well handle the space sickness matter to protect astronauts' health, recently, there is another issue emerged regarding the alarming health condition of Sunita Williams. Amid growing concern about the astronaut's health, recent shocking images show Williams with sunken cheeks and noticeable weight loss, triggered worries about her health as she remained beyond Earth's atmosphere for several months. The images have raised fears about potential nutritional deficiencies, which are a common problem that astronauts face when in space for long periods. Williams later quickly assured the public, saying that she weighs the same as she did at the time of the original launch. It may be that the zero-gravity environment of the space station is impacting the way they look, she said. Things shift around quite a bit, Williams said during a recent video interview. You probably heard of a fluid shift where folks in space, you know, their heads look a little bit bigger because the fluid evens out along the body. 
The crew's health is regularly monitored by dedicated flight surgeons back on Earth, said Dr. J.D. Polk, NASA's chief health and medical officer. And the astronauts each follow an individual diet and fitness routine to stay healthy while in space, Polk added. The astronauts work out in space for more than two hours every day, Wilmore said. Their fitness routines include running, biking, and weightlifting. While in space, the two are also helping to maintain the ISS and working on research projects, including investigations into the effects of zero-gravity environments on the human body. However, those explanations seem not to work. Doctors have said Sunita's gaunt appearance is worrying, adding that the natural stresses of living at a very high altitude are getting to the astronauts' bodies. Maintaining energy balance is difficult in microgravity, where astronauts may experience a negative energy balance due to reduced appetite or changes in metabolism. This can lead to muscle degradation and weakened immune function over time. According to Dr. Barali Swetha, chief dietitian, Glen Eagles Aware Hospital, LB Nagar, Hyderabad, Typically, a male astronaut requires around 2,700 to 3,700 calories daily, while female astronauts may need about 2,000 to 2,700 calories. These needs vary based on body size, mission activities, and individual metabolism, but they generally surpass Earth-based calorie requirements due to the microgravity environment, which increases energy demands on the body, he said. In NASA's view, the ISS has sufficient provisions to support the crew. The space station is well stocked with everything the crew needs, including food, water, clothing, and oxygen. Two spacecraft carrying 8,200 pounds of food, fuel, supplies, and three tons of cargo arrived at the ISS recently, NASA said. Additionally, the SpaceX Dragon cargo capsule has already completed its 31st resupply mission in early November delivering 6,000 pounds, 2,700 kilograms, of food, equipment, and experiments to the ISS. Despite this reassurance, experts still believe that their fresh food stocks are running low. The New York Post published an article on November 18 revealing that Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore have been feasting on pizza, roast chicken, and even shrimp cocktails, but have very little fresh food in their diets. The pair are chowing down on a variety of food, including breakfast cereal with powdered milk, pizza, shrimp cocktails, roast chicken, and tuna, as medics ensure they are consuming enough calories. However, the diet is limited when it comes to fresh fruit and vegetables as it takes three months for the ISS to get a new supply of fresh food. There's fresh fruit at first, but as the three months continue that goes away and their fruits and vegetables are packaged or freeze-dried. Williams even admits the diet constraints on the ISS can be hard to manage. Packaged meals and preserved foods may not provide the necessary nutrients over extended time periods. And this brings up valid points about dietary intakes and formats of food supplied to astronauts. If fresh food becomes scarce, the impact on astronauts' health, particularly for those like Williams and fellow astronaut Butch Wilmore, could be more severe than initially anticipated. Similarly, other astronauts often report that food tastes bland in space, which can affect their willingness to eat adequately. The psychological aspects of consumption play significant roles too. The comfort and nutrition of consuming familiar fresh items can have important ramifications on mood and effectiveness during missions. Reports suggest astronauts with more varied diets which could include fresh produce, are often found to perform various tasks more effectively. NASA has also realized these challenges, so the National Agency has been advancing food production technologies to incorporate more sustainable solutions for the ISS. For example, efforts to build the vegetable production system, known as Veggie, is a space garden residing on the space station. Veggie's purpose is to help NASA study plant growth in microgravity, while adding fresh food to the astronauts' diet and enhancing happiness and well-being in the orbiting laboratory. The veggie garden is about the size of a carry-on piece of luggage and typically holds six plants. Each plant grows in a pillow filled with a clay-based growth media and fertilizer. 
the pillows are important to help distribute water, nutrients, and air in a healthy balance around the roots. Otherwise, the roots would either drown in water or be engulfed by air because of the way fluids in space tend to form bubbles. To date, Veggie has successfully grown a variety of plants, including three types of lettuce, Chinese cabbage, Mizuna mustard, red Russian kale, and zinnia flowers. The flowers were especially popular with astronaut Scott Kelly, who picked a bouquet and photographed it floating in the cupola against the backdrop of Earth. Some of the plants were harvested and eaten by the crew members, with the remaining samples returned to Earth to be analyzed. One concern was harmful microbes growing on the produce. So far, no harmful contamination has been detected, and the food has been safe and enjoyable for the crew to eat. Anyway, with the current troubles of the astronauts, all eyes are on Boeing and NASA as the culprits of this matter. In 2014, NASA awarded Boeing a $4.2 billion fixed-price contract to build a vehicle to carry astronauts to the International Space Station after the retirement of space shuttles, along with a $2.6 billion contract to SpaceX. The shuttle's retirement in 2011 forced the national agency to rely entirely on the Russian Soyuz capsule to transport astronauts to the ISS for a decade. To get rid of this reliance, they came up with the Commercial Crew Program, which was kicked off by Commercial Crew Development Phase 1 in 2010. Under the program, NASA made a list of requirements for a new transportation system, focusing on safety and low cost. If a company was interested in working with NASA, the company could design, build, and test any type of transportation that would meet NASA's needs. The CCP is the first time the space agency has used this method of working with businesses to fly its astronauts. Boeing, with more than a century of building airplanes and decades as a NASA contractor, was seen as the favorite. But Starliner suffered technical setbacks that caused it to cancel some test launches, fall behind schedule, and go over budget. SpaceX won the race to ferry astronauts to the ISS, which it accomplished in 2020. Now, after a failed crewed test flight and a $1.85 billion loss, Boeing has considered selling its troubled spacecraft, capping over a decade of failures for the program. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.